Thanks for joining me on episode 424 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. Hey there, I'm Cassidy Cash, the host of That Shakespeare Life. If you'd like to impact the world one day like Shakespeare, one way to do that is listening to this. It's Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mayher. And the title of that sermon was Adulting is Hard. And that's true. Being an adult in today's world is hard. You're bombarded with information all the time. You're bombarded with new things all the time. And all too often what we end up doing is bouncing from new thing to new thing to new thing to new thing to new thing and never developing persistence. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about investing in others through stewarding your talent, I talk with you about the difference between working in your strengths and working in your weakness, why working in your strength is not the same as not trying new things, and why you really need to learn to try new things if you really want to work in your strengths. You've heard me talk about developing your talent, and one of the best ways to do that is through books. But if you're like most people today, it's hard to find the time to read. And that's why today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Go to inspiredstewardship.com slash audible to sign up and you can get a 30-day free trial. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from and you can pick one and listen your way to developing your talents via Audible. That's inspiredstewardship.com slash audible to get your free trial and listen to great books the same way you're listening to this podcast. You know, one thing that often ends up being a point of discussion with people when we're working together is this idea of, should I work on my strengths and work within my strengths, or should I spend time working on my weaknesses and improving those areas where I'm struggling? And the short answer is, yes, you probably should. You should probably do some of both. You've you've got to work within your weaknesses at some level just to continue to improve and to make sure that you're functional in that level. For one thing, for instance, if, if you can't do basic math, then you're going to struggle living in the world today. And so you've got to get to a certain base level of ability in something like that. But if math is not your strong suit, you probably don't want to go become an accountant or a CPA or a bookkeeper. Because at the end of the day, that would be trying to take your weakness and make that your prime area of focus where you work. You definitely want to work in your strengths and work from your strengths, not work from areas of weakness. Now, that again, that doesn't mean that you don't ever have to do something that you're weak in, but you can begin to find ways to shore up your weakness by adding team members, by adding contractors, by finding ways to work with other people, by developing systems and processes that make that part of your job or that part of your focus or that part of your work easier and more streamlined and more clear cut to you. And the other thing that I see happening a lot of times is people will say, well, I'm not good at math, and so I should work with them in my strengths, so I'm not going to do anything that has to do with math. I'm, I'm not going to learn how to balance my checkbook, or I'm not going to le- learn how to do basic math, like run a budget or these sorts of things, because, you know, I'm just not good with numbers. See, the truth is that oftentimes we use working in our strengths and avoiding our weaknesses as an excuse to either not do something that we don't like to do, not do something that we don't want to do, or not do something that we are a little afraid of trying. We don't want to try something new. We don't want to risk the chance that we might fail by doing something that lies a little outside of our strengths. 
And the problem is by limiting yourself in that way, you end up not discovering new strengths. You end up not discovering new areas where you might shine. You end up not stretching yourself and growing yourself. So there, there is a lot of balance here. You work within your strengths, but you still try out new things. You still run experiments to see if the new things that you're trying allow you to discover new strengths or allow you to discover new ways to build upon your weaknesses as well. You really have to constantly be testing, constantly running experiments, constantly developing new systems and processes and fine-tuning and tweaking the ones that you have so that you're constantly leveling up within your strengths. This is how you really continue growth throughout your life. But all too often what happens instead is we get very content with certain things. We begin to look at the world to be a certain way, the way that we want it to be, where we get to do all the things that we like to do and none of the things that we hate to do. And you know what? That is not actually being an adult in today's world. You know, I, I'm reminded we had a, a pastor that came, an associate pastor that was here for a while, and she was quite a bit younger than most of the folks in the church. In fact, she was probably one of the youngest members in the church every Sunday, and she actually did a sermon, and the title of that sermon was Adulting is Hard. And that's true. Being an adult in today's world is hard. You're bombarded with information all the time. You're bombarded with new things all the time. And all too often what we end up doing is bouncing from new thing to new thing to new thing to new thing to new thing and never developing persistence or developing real skill in any area. And that's not what I'm suggesting here. But I am suggesting that a certain portion of your day, a certain portion of your year, a certain portion of your week, whatever it is, be spent running new tests to see if you can discover new strengths and new ways of making your strengths work to shore up your weakness. And by doing that, you constantly improve and constantly grow and you get a little better every day. And that's really a great goal to have. So I encourage you, Identify your strengths, work within those strengths, but also identify ways to shore up your weaknesses and continue to at least keep those at a level of excellence that you can live with while running experiments to see if you can find new ways to level up your weaknesses and double down and work even better within your strengths. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of talent, you can go over to inspiredstewardship.com slash talent and sign up for our five-week series on the stewardship of talent. Or if you're in the U.S., you can text 44222 talent tips, that's talent tips to 44222 and get those tips. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures, develop your influence, and impact the world.